These are challenging times. The pandemic is clearly putting CPP's investments, its portfolio to the test. One of your investments, Neiman Marcus, has already filed for bankruptcy protection. Will there be more? Yeah, so I'd, I'd say, uh, first of all, that, you know, we're pretty pleased with the fiscal year performance, you know, so March to March, we reported on March 31. And obviously that was right in the middle of you know, historic volatility and, uh, you know, historic speed of sell-off in different markets. And yet the portfolio did pretty well. You know, we had, we had a very good calendar, calendar year performance to December. And then diversification works. So while there's very, very few places in the world hide from the pandemic, you know, there are people, there are markets that were coming out of it uh, faster or sooner than as others were going into it. So as Europe was wrestling with it, it was about to hit the U.S. and North America. Uh, some markets in Asia were coming uh, coming out of it to some extent. So the, the diversification across geography, across uh, across asset class, across strategy did did work to uh, to a great extent and continues to work. So. Uh, look, so I, I, I can't comment on, uh, you know, Nima Marcus in particular, but, it, you know, because it's, uh, you know, it's now uh, in the bankruptcy process. But, uh, you know, there, there'll, be, there'll be spots in the portfolios that are, uh, you know, have been impacted by this. There's been an acceleration of some of the longer term trends that, uh, you know, we've uh, anticipated for a while. Um, and where where some uh, a whole bunch of other parts of the portfolio have actually relatively benefited from this, which I'm you know, happy to talk about. Mark, um, I'll start with the challenge part of the crisis, and then we can move on to the opportunity part of the crisis. Tell me, describe for me, if you will, how the pandemic is putting the portfolio to the test. I mentioned Neiman Marcus. I understand that you can't talk about it. But do you see a risk of bankruptcy in other portfolio holdings? Do you see stress, for example, in your private credit portfolio? Yeah, so the, when, when you look across the whole portfolio, there'll, there'll, there'll be pockets that are, are impacted. So anything that is uh, travel related, anything that involves experience within a small space, um, I think is probably going to be impacted for quite a while. And so, you know, some of those trends that we we thought and a lot of uh, investors thought were going to be there, you know, shared, you know, the, the experience economy, um, you know, that, that's going to be hard if it involves a... Uh, you know, that's, on, that's on hold, in other words, for a while. Yeah, that, that one's on hold. But then there's a lot of other trends that, you know, we saw, you know, the e-commerce, uh, you know, delivery, uh, telemedicine, uh, fintech, you know, the, these areas, there's been enormous uptick of adoption, particularly amongst older age group, which have been, you know, a little bit slower adopters, but then... You know, this, this has sort of forced people to you know, do home banking, to force people to uh, do home, more home delivery of, you know, sort of the things they might not have ordered otherwise. They may have ordered books, but now they're ordering groceries if they can. And that, those types of things are probably going to be more sticky. Even, you know, I'd say online education as well. Now, while, you know, the up, uptake has been more in the East than in the West, uh, you know, West, I think, you know, Western markets are still quite resistant to online education uh i think you know there, there is a sort of surge in that direction as well so there's a bunch of trends that uh you know we we see um accelerating and that there have been opportunities but then there's others that have been hurt so so you know your portfolio well and you're a long-term investor give me your best sense do you think this pandemic over the longer term is going to prove to be an accelerant to returns because it is you know putting a tailwind behind some of the trends that you just described or a retardant because it is going to slow travel, it's going to slow hotels, it's going to slow everything from casinos to gyms, and the list goes on. Yeah, well, I think when you get up to the top, you look at the portfolio overall, you know, one of the things that's happened is obviously uh, interest rates have gone out of zero. And, uh, you know, listening to the prior speaker talk a little bit about that, when it was at the zero bound, um, then, you know, I think all, all returns are going to be quite suppressed for uh, for a period of time you know for quite a period of time here so i think yeah so some there'll be accelerants of some certain parts of the economy and you know that that's uh, you know depression on other parts of the economy but i think overall asset returns are probably going to be something lower than they have been for the last 10 years i mean i think if you ask me before equity markets have rallied back probably some more uh, more opportunities and equities, equities have uh, rallied back quite strongly particularly in north america Mark, when you say investment returns are going to be depressed, are we talking about sub-5% across the portfolio, 
for another decade? Give me your best I, sense. Yeah, I, you know, that, I mean, we, we've had in the long term, you know, even at the end of this fiscal year, our returns were uh, close to 10%, so 9.9% for 10 years. Uh, you know, the, again, the chief actuary of the country anticipates we'll, we'll make uh, somewhere just under 4% over inflation over 75 years. So if you get into the really long term, so, uh, so we, you know, call that, call that 6% on the normalized, uh, you know, normalized inflation rate. So I, I think, you know, you, you're looking at returns for the portfolio more in that type of, uh, more in that type of zone for the, for the next, you know, next several years rather than, uh, you know, the sort of 10% plus that we've enjoyed since the GFC. Mark, as you know, many companies are planning on doing less corporate travel and having less office space in the future, long after the pandemic is over. CPPIB is a major investor in commercial real estate. Are you anticipating less demand and lower returns because more people will be working from home on a permanent basis? Yeah, I mean, th th this is a really interesting topic. I think the jury's out on this one. I mean, it's pretty clear in, in real estate that there's certain pieces of, uh, certain of, the, of the asset class that have benefited really well. So data centers, uh, logistics, warehouses, et cetera, have done really well and will probably continue to thrive. At the other end of the spectrum, you know, you've got, uh, you know, hospitality, which is, you know, obviously, you know, really impaired right now. Um, and shopping malls, which, you know, are going to struggle given that, the, you know, that business model is getting many people through as possible. And in, in an era of social distancing, that they're going to, they're going to have a more challenged time for, for a while, and particularly with the move online as well, which is, which has been an issue. So, and somewhere in the middle is the office. So on the one hand, you've got the trend of, uh, you know, people needing bigger floor plates for social distancing for a period of time. On the other hand, yeah, you know, I think the longer this goes on, the more sticky the uh, you know, flexibility for people working from remote will become uh, both efficient and effective and attractive. So, uh, and then you've got elevators as well, just simple, the bottleneck of elevators and getting people up and down very tall buildings uh, with, uh, you know, if you've got social distancing and elevators, which a lot of people are trying to work through what, the what, What's the upshot of that? Do you stop buying office towers in a place like it's, Manhattan? It, yeah, look, it's at the moment. I think the uh, the jury is out on where this where this lands in the longer term. I mean, I think there's probably going to be still robust demand for you know for you know great office space in, in central locations. I think in the longer term, once uh, there is decent immunity across the population, um, or you know some uh, some better better uh, uh, lowering of the morbidity of the disease, then I think. Uh, you're going to get people wanting to be back with each other. You know, mm -hmm. We're social beings. We want to be around people. We want to go to busy restaurants because we love the buzz. We want to go to busy you know, nightclubs because we love the buzz. We want to go to movie theaters where we're never going to talk to the people around us, but we like the experience of sharing something. I think those things will come. You know, it's a human, human nature. Um, an office will be part of that. But there's, uh, you know, there's a yearning for people to be with other people and they function better when you are with other people. So I think, I, I don't think it will go away forever, but I think it will be, it will probably be a slower return the longer this uh, social distancing continues. Mark, get you. Um, quickly before we run out of time, you lived in Hong Kong for many years working for Goldman Sachs before you came to CPPIB. China warned over the weekend that the U.S. is risking a new Cold War. Is that where you see things headed and will CPP's Asia strategy have to change as a result? Well, I think the, the two things. First of all, um, I think the, the tensions between uh, China and the rest of the world are, you know, have, have really, uh, really increased, and uh, particularly with the U.S. And I, I don't see that trend uh, reversing. Um, secondly, the reason why we invest in Asia is. Uh, that huge markets that we can diversify into that are relatively uncorrelated with the rest of the world and alpha or the outperformance, the inefficiencies in those markets and certainly the emerging markets in Asia. Both of those theses still hold. Uh, there's still great big markets that we can diversify into and you know, they, they are less and less, you know, in some ways less correlated with the rest of the world. Uh, so, you know, you even look in, uh, you know, in March uh, when, uh, you know, the U.S. market was down significantly. Mark. Down the I, you know, China didn't move that much. And, and there's huge inefficiency. I'm sorry, Mark, I have to end it there before we run out of time. Mark Machen is CEO of the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board.